with the sheep heart, one of the things that becomes uh, clear is where the front of the heart is versus the back of the heart. And what you use is this anterior intraventricular sulcus, the groove, <clears throat> because you can see that anteriorly it's oblique and in the back it's pretty much straight up and down. Okay, so you have your orientation then for everything in, in the heart. And if you look at the top, you see the right atrium and the left atrium here at the top, which looks very, very different than the, the actual uh, models. This is, this is the actual, okay? If we open the right side of the heart then, and this is opened, is that your monitor band, yes. this little guy? This is a, a, a small, thin monitor band, not, not necessarily small, but thin, all right? It's found on the, in the right ventricle, okay? And you can see, also, if you look down into the heart, you can see that tricuspid valve on the right side. You see this nice sheet of connective tissue and the chordae tendinae that are coming off of it and going into papillary muscles. And then also on the right side, one of the things we can do is we can go out by way of the pulmonary trunk, and which means that we can see those pulmonary semilunars. Here's one that's sort of ripped, but here's one that's pretty much intact. You can see that it's like a little cup, and so it makes sense then when we start learning about how these pulmonary semilunar valves work. Remember, we have three of these cusps um, on both the pulmonary semilunar and the aortic semilunar. On the left side, one of the things that becomes pretty obvious right away is the difference in thickness. So you can actually tell which side you're on and therefore which, whether you're in the front or the back, by looking at the thickness of the walls of the ventricles. You can see that this left side is much, much thicker. Here is your bicuspid valve, and you can see that very well here with its chordae tendinae. And I've been told that we can even go up through the aortic semilunar valve and out the aorta here. Okay, So that's pretty much the kind of thing. In addition, you have between the uh, ventricles and the atria, you have the coronary sulcus, okay? Remember, all these sulci are there to protect the blood vessels. It's sort of a packing material, okay? Let's look at the other structures that we can see more on a model. Now, this is uh, a model of the human um, heart, and you can see coming off the aortic arch that you have a right um, brachiocephalic um, artery, but then you have a separate left common carotid and left subclavian, which is different than the cat, as you know. Um, also, the artery, the atria versus the ventricles looks very different. One of the things that, that is sort of strange with the heart is that we call this top area the base and the bottom is the apex, because it comes to an apex. It comes to a nice little um, point. You know that actually the superior and inferior vena cavas merge together as they come into the right atrium. And in addition, you have a third opening right here, and that's the opening to the coronary uh, sinus. Okay, which we'll see in the back. You have some really important vessels here. Here is the left carotid okay, artery, and that's going to branch immediately into the anterior interventricular artery and the circumflex artery. And then the right coronary artery, however, comes out and goes all the way around. Now, if we take the model and look at the back, you see the circumflex is going all the way around on the right 
coronary arteries going all the way around. Well, they actually merge here in the back and form an anastomosis. Here we have the posterior interventricular artery. Okay. Now, if we look, at, as long as we're back here, here is that coronary sinus. All right. Also from the back, it's clearer to see the pulmonary veins coming back into the left atrium. Okay. So this is the great cardiac vein. This is probably the posterior, although I probably won't ask it. Um, so your great cardiac vein comes all the way up and goes all the way around. Okay, comes up the anterior interventricular sulcus and goes all the way around. Okay, and this is the posterior interventricular vein. Then, no, no, it's not. Don't listen to me. This is the middle uh, vein. Okay, so coronary for arteries, cardiac for veins. All right. If we go back to the front, one of the things we also see is the pulmonary trunk, and we also see this ligamentum arteriosum um, that actually was a tube between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta uh, in the fetus. Okay, and we'll talk more about that um, in the second part when we're doing um, the reproductive system uh, with regard to the fe uh, fetus. Mm, I don't know what else do you want. The ascending, descending aorta, the septum. Well, this is ascending aorta, descending aorta. Um, you have the interventricular between, inter, between the ventricles, interventricular septum. Remember, a septum is a wall. Here you have the um, <clears throat> tricuspid valve, the bicuspid valve, the pulmonary semilunar, which you only have two cusps on, but you actually have three. The third cusp is actually down here. Down where? Oh, okay. There's the third one right there. Um, and and obviously the atria look very, very different than on the real heart. Okay. All right.